in this video, we want to walk you through the anatomy of the urinary system. And of course, the urinary system includes the kidneys, the ureter, bladder, and urethra. So let's orient ourselves to the, to the location of the kidney and what we see in this shot. So here is the view of the posture abdominal wall while we have pushed all the intestinal loops to one side, to the right side. So here we have the inferior vena cava, we have the aorta, we have the left kidney, okay? Now, in regards to the kidney, um, the kidney actually is a bean-shaped organ located in the posterior abdominal wall, then that is retroperitoneal organ. But as I mentioned, in this view, we have removed everything so you don't see the peritoneum. Okay, in regards to the relationship of the kidney with the other structures, I'm gonna lift the kidney and pull it to the right side and look at the a, a muscular bed, um, um, which is made by several muscles um, um, that they make a bed for the kidney, actually. So here is the fibers of the um, diaphragm. Then we have the transversus abdominis right here, if I push it like that, so you can see the fibers of the post transversus abdominis muscle, um, which is arising from a, the, it, this whitish st structure is known as thoracolumbar fascia, okay? Then we have this muscle right here, that is quadratus lumbrum muscle, and the last but not least here is the suas major. This muscle is suas major. So then, then the kidney actually has a relationship with these muscles. Also good to know that between the kidney and these muscles on the posterior abdominal wall, we have, or we can find some of the branches of lumbar plexus, such as subcostal, and iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal. But in here we have a normal variation. We don't see both of the um, iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal nerve. So then the kidney actually is leaning on, on these nerves. Okay, let's go through the external feature of the, of the kidney. Okay, since the kidney is being shaped, um, so we are gonna focus actually on two parts of the, of the kidney. One is superior pole, which is right here, and as you can see on the medial side, is occupied by the adrenal gland or suprarenal gland right there, that is the gland, which good to know is separated from kidney by layer of fascia, then it has its own capsule and fascia. And then the medial border of the kidney, which is right here, and on the medial border there is a slit right there, which is known as renal hilum. The renal hilum gives passage to the structures which are going into the kidney or leaving the kidney, such as this big one here, renal vein. Then we have the renal artery right here. We also have re another renal artery here. That is normal variation, is extra artery going to the kidney. And on the posterior side, we have the ureter right there. Okay, these are the structures, and, and also we leave, leave nodes that um, are associated with the, with the renal hilum. And also good to know that um, each kidney is surrounded by um, layers of uh, fat or, or connective tissue. Um, so on this side, I have, uh, we have opened actually the, the layer of the fat here. So we have perirenal and perorenal fat with renal fascia separating these two. So, but practically from in, an, uh, in, in the dissection, we cannot separate them. So it's just, the, just these two together. And as you can see, I can easily, we can easily take the kidney out of that layer. In this shot, we want to walk you through the internal feature of the, of the kidney. So as you recall, here is the hilum of the kidney and here's the ureter right here. So we will open the kidney like, like a book like here and we look at inside. So in regards to the internal feature, we have three distinct area. That pale area on the periphery is referred to as cortex. Then we have medullary part of the kidney or just medulla, which is um, this area is filled um, or occupied by the pyramidal shape structures known as renal pyramid right there. And then 
this area right here, which is a space, and I put the tip of my probe in the space, that referred to as renal sinus. The renal sinus is filled by the branches of the renal artery, tributaries of the renal vein, and also these structures, the tube-like structures that collect the, the urine. So we go with the name of this in a second. Now back to the cortex. As you can see, part of the cortex has invaginated um, and, and sitting between the renal pyramids. So this part is referred to as renal column. And one renal pyramid plus half of the renal column is referred to as renal lobe. Now, the base of the renal pyramid is facing to the renal cortex. However, the tip, which is right here, is pointed and is referred to as renal papilla. Renal papilla. Now, renal pap from the renal papilla, the urine, which is, by the way, is, is located inside the collecting tubules inside the renal pyramid, is drained to a cup-shaped structure known as minor calyx, which is right here. And some minor calyces join together, and they form the major calyx. So that is major calyx right here. So if I can hold my probe right there, that is minor calyx. Then here is the major calyx. And two or sometimes three major calyces join together, and they form this expanded part known as renal pelvis. OK, then all these um, structures actually collect the urine from the renal pyramids, and then the urine is going to be drained from the renal pelvis into the ureter. Then ureter actually starts from the renal pelvis. OK, when the ureter actually coming out of the, um, the the renal hilum, so it travels on the posterior abdominal wall, okay, crosses with the suas major, is actually in front of the suas major, and good to know that ureter here crosses one of the branches of the lumbar plexus, that is genitofemoral nerve, okay, then passes over the pelvic rim, and it goes all the way down into the pelvis. Now, inside the pelvis for our orientation, that is pubic symphysis, then that is bladder. Then when it goes through the pelvis, it joins the bladder or enters the bladder. And then right here, it crosses the vas deferens. And this is rectum behind the bladder and the pouch right there between the bladder and the rectum. OK, so we are looking at the female pelvis here. So for orientation again, here is the pubic symphysis. We have the bladder right here the uterus, and the rectum down there on the posterior side. That is the, that is the rectum. OK. So um, of course, ureter coming from the posterior abdominal wall and joins the bladder, or at, uh, actually enters the bladder. Let me just move that one here that you can see better, right here. Now, when the ureter comes to the pelvis, it crosses with an artery here in female pelvis. That artery is uterine artery. And usually the mnemonic that we use is called the bridge over water. So the bridge is uterine artery, and the water is, is ureter. OK. Now, in regards to the internal feature of the bladder, so as you can see, the bladder has been opened here. OK, so we are going to open that completely. And then, um, then we look at inside the bladder. So the mucous membrane of the bladder um, has um, actually folds all the way around the bladder or inside, except one area right here, which is a triangular shape. So I'm going to hold the pelvis like that, that you can see better. Perfect. OK, so that triangle area is called um, trigon, the urinary trigon. So the corner of the, um, or angles of the trigon uh, is made by the, the entrance of the ureter, one here. One there, and down here is the opening of urethra. Okay, then urinary trigon is made or is located between these three openings. The mucous membrane here is a smooth, whereas the rest of the bladder, as I said, it has folds. And good to know 
that from embryology, um, embryonic, um, from the embryology perspective, that trigon is derived from mesoderm, whereas the rest of the bladder is derived from endoderm. Okay, let's look at the different parts of the bladder in the female, female pelvis. So uh, first, we need to orient ourselves. Here is the pubic symphysis. That is bladder. Then the uterus on the back, vagina, and part of the rectum and anal canal from anterior to posterior. And we also have a section of the clitoris here and the urethra right there. This is urethra. Okay, when it comes to the different parts of the bladder, so let's zoom in here that we can see better, um, actually more um, close of the bladder. Thank you. Perfect, that's great. Okay, now the bladder actually has the superior surface right here, the apex, which is right, right there. That apex is attached to the umbilicus via ligament, median umbilical ligament. It has the base right there and the neck. That, that neck surrounds the upper part of the urethra and then inferolateral surfaces. So that's kind of the orientation of the bladder. It's like, um, like, like bended forward. Um, so then also you can see better um, mucosal fold in this specimen inside the, inside the bladder. Okay, then when it comes to the urethra, Good to know that urethra is really short in female, almost four centimeters. That opens actually in the vestibule, that space, uh, that area, that the space is uh, between the labia minora, okay? So the urethra and opening into the, into the vestibule. Let's go with the bladder and different parts of the urethra in male pelvis. As always, we need to orient ourselves here. Um, here is the pubic symphysis, bladder behind the pubic symphysis, the prostate, the rectum and anal canal, and then the sacrum. So then it's from anterior to posterior. Okay, so in regards to the external feature of the bladder in male, we do have all the parts that we have, we, um, we already look at in, in female pelvis. And also the relationship here, um, which is of course different in male pelvis. One is the relationship between the ureter and the structure in the pelvis. If I can hold it, uh, the pelvis like that, thank you. So here is the ureter coming from the posterior abdominal wall. And then as you can see, it crosses with the structure here. That is vas deferon or ductus deferens. Then practically the mnemonic of uh, uh, bridge over water in male pelvis is ductus deferens or vas deferon that passes over the ureter, okay? Now, when we follow the vas deferon posteriorly here, then the expanded part of the vas deferon, which is right here, this one, is ampulla of, of vas deferon and then seminal vesicle. These two are associated with the, the, the base of the bladder here. Okay, now let's go with different parts of the, of the urethra. So if we can zoom in here that we can see better a close up of the urethra. So you can zoom in, perfect, thank you. So I'm gonna move that specimen right here, perfect. Okay, so the um, different parts of the urethra includes um, um, the parts which are passing through different organs. So this part of the urethra is called prostatic part of the urethra. As you can see, it passes through the prostate, and that is the, the um, most dilated part of the urethra. And the part before that is preprostatic part, which is right here, and that part is surrounded by the internal urethral sphincter. Okay, going down, this part of the urethra is the one that um, surrounded by the external urethral sphincter. Practically, that is the deep perineal pouch here. And the last part is the part that passes through penis, which is called penile or a spongy part of urethra. So then we follow that all the way down here. By the way, this is corpus spongioso that urethra passes through. And then 
at the tip of the penis where we have the glans penis right there. Urethra is expanded and it's called navicular fossa.